11 in Melbourne, a low of 10 degrees overnight. <laughs> Love to leave the mic on sometime. Yes, you I don't mean, know what you're missing, folks. You leave yeah. the mic on sometime. It's like days of our lives. Yes. It's like the young and the restless. The bold and the beautiful. It's like, oh, Calcutta. Yes, it it's is. everything. Yeah, the Kama Sutra. Oh. Hmm. A low of 10 degrees overnight, partly cloudy tomorrow, sunny breaks forecast, a high of 22. If we wrote a book about all we know oh. over the years, oh. it'd be a sizzling bestseller. Oh, it would be. Yes. It's like the woman in, in America who did the thing on Frank Sinatra. What was her name? Ruby Rose or something. Kitty Kelly. Kitty Kelly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Ripping them from the, from the yes. highest... Uh, I've got so many stories about legends I've worked with that no one knows. Well, you could, it's, it's an alphabet. It's, it's yeah. who's who of show business in your life. I wouldn't do it. It'd be a betrayal. Oh, well, things getting pretty tough, you would. Oh, yes, Mr. The Mill, where do I sign? Yeah, you Let's get... start with Edna. Yeah, well, you watch that, because there's a couple of chapters on you, sonny boy. Mate, listen to me, matey. There's <laughs> nothing on me. There's nothing there. Nothing to hide? No, mm. it only lies. So if I read it, and I think, oh, did I do that? No, the lying hound. You'll probably sue me. Now, dogs in Bunnings. I'm sick to death of hearing this. Everyone's commentating on dogs in oh, Bunnings. Yes. Do you see them in other stores? Do you see them in restaurants? No. Well, is it a thing like overseas? You see them in, in hotels. You, you often see dogs at outdoor restaurants, you know, and they're welcome where there's yeah, outdoor dining. I understand. Under the table. Karen of Narry Warren South writes in today's Herald Sun. Yes. Can someone please clarify whom it is to, I can sue? After falling and breaking a hip from slipping on dogs, we, Bunnings or the dog's owner? A legal minefield from Karen of Narry Warren. Yes. Who knows it might have been the owner's oh, we? It could, could, could well have been. You never know. Uh, Margaret of West Heidelberg. Hello, Bruce and Phil. Yes, Margaret. Um, I've got an idea for a vaccine against di uh, diabetes. Mm -hmm. yes. I got it from the gardening program Sunday week. Oh, yes. Uh, and um, they said that sugar accelerates the flowering process. Yes. And they said that sugar is diabetes. Mm -hmm. Well, if sugar uh, is bacteria, that's what they said, um, it could be a vaccine against diabetes. Oh, yes. All right. Yes. Mm. Right, that's food for thought, yeah. Well, keep that in mind, any of our mm. uh, diabetes sufferers yeah. or... I, I, I would imagine a lot of people succumb to diabetes because they eat too many sweet foods. Well, I think you're probably right there. I imagine that they've got too much sugar in their blood. Okay, Mark. Thank you, Margaret. Noel at Melton. Hello, Bruce and Phil. Bruce, how are you feeling? Yeah, great, thank you. How are you? Oh, I'm not too bad. That's the way. Yeah, I'm not playing fiddlesticks like that other lady. Oh, I used to <laughs> love it. She must have gone to sleep playing fiddlesticks. I think she did. Yes. And, uh... I hope your health uh, gets better. Yeah, it's feeling fine, thanks. Oh, that's great. I miss you two boys. Why? Well, I haven't. Well, I haven't been ringing up, have I? Well, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> and what's that Philip Brady up to? Well, do you know the good news is, folks? These days we podcast the show, and that means oh. that if you tune to the audio link of three aw dot com dot a, you can replay the show at any hour of any oh, day. I'm Noel, I'm sure Noel of Milton would be podcasting probably every afternoon. Mm hmm. You have a pod? What's that? Oh, just. Mm -hmm. For yeah. those who can't tune in after ten, you've got an alternative now. Yeah, I'm, could, always, yeah. I'm always listening to 3AW, but I miss you too. Well, Thank you don't you, have darling. to, because at 8 o'clock every night, oh. you could replay yeah. last night's show. Oh, good. Mm, at home. Oh, very and good. best to Mick too, Noel. Yeah, Mick's uh, half asleep mm. beside me. Yeah, okay, so Noel, am I. Good luck to you. Thank you. Jeff, good evening. Oh, good day there, Bruce and Phil. Oh, Just, um, a couple of old games, I suppose, going right back to my very early childhood. We used to play that game um, called Knuckles, you know, with the old Lambo Knuckles. Oh, Jacks. Yeah, oh, Jacks, is that what it was called? Yeah. You know, you put them on the back of your hand. That's right. Flip, flip it in the air and try and pick up another one and get as many as you could. Well, that's so, right. It was, uh, girls, up, girls, up, used to, up, girls used to play it. Oh, there you go. I'll <laughs> 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 so, so did I. 
But uh, I think after a while they actually produced them in a plastic format, you know. I think like they the, did. The game. But yes. something else too, which just shows a, a, a complete change in sort of thinking and standards, was that another game I used to play, and I live, bear in mind I lived in the, um, the leafy suburb of Mont Albert, and I'd go out to the backyard with my sister and we would take the Daisy air rifle out there and shoot at empty Coke cans sitting up on the, on the fence. So That's it's right. Some, it's something you'd never do today, would you? No, you would not. Yeah, so anyway, just a couple of memories there. there. I, thank you very much, Jeff. Thanks, You're always nice to hear from me. I remember as a kid I'd get a cap gun because I used to love dressing up as mm. the Indians or the Cowboys and I think they were cardboard chaps that we used to put on our pants. Yes, you know? from Coles. But the old cap gun, they mm. were fabulous. Yeah. yeah. But it was always the big kids up the road who had an air rifle. And sure. you'd say, what did he get for, what did he get for Christmas? Mm. Oh, an air rifle. He's going out to... Shooting whatever. Yeah. And and do you remember we all had pen knives too when we were young? You uh, your uncle yes. would give you pen you wouldn't be allowed to these days. You'd be frisked and the police would confiscate it these oh, days. Would have, oh yes, I, you don't carry knives I, I, around. I, we all had pen knives too. Marilyn at West Rosebud. Hi, Bruce and Phil. Yes, Larry. I used to love playing hopscotch. Oh yes. Yeah. And also a game of shuttlecock. Oh, great. Badminton, yes. Yeah, and, you know, you get the AJC jam tins and turn them upside down and put a nail in either side, thread the string through and hold, stand on them and hold on to them and clip, clop, clip, clop, clip, clop. Yes, clip, yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, great. They were lovely. All right, Ben. Thank you, darling. Thank you very much. He used to be a robot. Do you remember the robot who used to uh, you ask a question and he would have a wand yes. and he'd turn around on this mirror and he'd point to the answer? Who okay. remembers that robot? That was magical, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Most of them are at 20 to midnight, just checking uh, the weather for you. A low of 10 degrees overnight, quite a uh, mild, if not a bit chilly morning on the way. Mm. Partly cloudy tomorrow, sunny breaks on the way and a top of 22 degrees. Yeah, a bit wintry at the moment. Closing the show tomorrow night with uh, the last post, the origins of the last post on mm. uh, Remembrance Day. So uh, one of the most beautiful pieces I've ever read. I'll look forward to that very much. Noel at Greensboro, good evening. Yes, uh, good evening, uh, Bruce and Phil. Hi. Look, uh, I'd like to uh, make a comment about private health insurance. Of course. And warn people just to be careful uh, with their private health insurance. My uh, wife has just recently gone to hospital, and private hospitals, and has incurred over $4,500 worth of gap fees. Unbelievable, but they're in there. They're the head, little hidden thing that people don't really realise until. Good evening. Don't come in here and say it's boring. I'm not talking about our show, and don't dob me in for uh, the subject matter that I discuss with I you. I thought you were talking about the program. Never, no, it's never dull. Folks, congratulations uh, on our ratings today. 3AW, clearly number one, thanks to all of you who put up your hand for us. Did you come in? Uh, yes, I was here for the meeting, and uh, uh, both Nightline and Remember When uh, ahead, clearly number one by a mile. Yes, it was just wonderful for the whole station, for everyone involved. Yes. And we do thank you very sincerely. Yes, the station went up by leaps and bounds. Nobody shows off, well, at least in this little corner of the world. No. Nobody is glowing, no thrusting of chests in the air. No. Well, you know, we thank Simon and Ken and mm. Bianca and all our contributors. We don't even go really that far. Peter Hitchin. No. We Kevin don't. Trask and Paul Harris. No, it's just you and me, and sometimes it's not you. Well, I give credit to the listeners, because I'm really only the, the grouting. I'm only really the well, you're glue. We like the mortar. <laughs> Why do we always associate it with mortar, cement, yeah, glue, yeah. clag? Yeah, I know. Spatula. Yeah, we're just a grouting between the bricks. That's all we are. Yeah, I know. We but are. Uh, well done, everybody. And of course, tomorrow being Remembrance Day, I thought we might have a, a special program tonight where people have a chance to ring up and talk about their memories. Oh yes, memories of of people in their lives who have done some great things. Maybe in the theatre of war. Yes. Maybe not so much, but mm -hmm. in peacetime, yes. they, they were just a, a wonderful example to the uh, the family. I think if you'd been called up, say, during the Vietnam War or whatever. I think you would have put your hand up for the entertainment unit. Yes. Way behind the lines, miles behind the action. Yes, I would have. <laughs>
I, I'd have said, uh, Commandant, no, 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 this is a bad start. Uh, I'd have said, sir, let me entertain the troops. They are heart, they're heartbroken. Yes. They're missing their families. They need the sucker and support of somebody from back home, and I am that. Yes, you would have been like a latter-day Bob Hope. Now, let's be honest, all the boys are coming back. The stage is set. Okay, entertainment. And I'm, I'm there with just a spotlight on. Yeah, give, Who's there in the audience? Can, uh, can give me some atmosphere, no, 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 some no, applause. No you, no, you bring that in and it dies. Okay. So, so walk on. I'll introduce you. Well, now, fellas, oh, gee, you had a hard day of action. Okay. Uh, avoiding very quick, very quickly. avoiding all that, landmines. All that palaver. No, get rid of that. Bazookas. Quick. So here, now, to Boom. lighten the atmosphere, right, okay. here's Bruce Mansfield. Oh. G'day, boys. How are we? <laughs> I know it's been a tough day, a tough battle. I'm here to entertain you. A lot of funny stories, a lot of <laughs> anecdotes, if you like, about my life. Any questions at all? Any comments you'd like to make? Yeah, yeah. By what authority are you on stage? What have you done in the past, mate? Yeah, certainly not what you boys have done. You've put yeah. your lives in the uh, in the line, but I'm here to to bring you a little bit of uh, sucker from home, a little bit of uh, bit of uh, well, a bit of heartbreak. Yeah. No, not heartbreak, but uh, mm. sucker. Faggot. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, there's. Uh, Oh, the enemy. Oh, <laughs> the enemy have arrived. Hiya, hiya, mate. Minhoi. I've got them. <laughs> oh, and so it goes. Oh, that's yes. it. Anyway, oh, a, 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 a wonderful day with surveys and ratings and things. We're just so grateful. Yes, and a very special day tomorrow. Don't forget the one-minute silence at 11 a.m. And apropos of that, I'll be closing tomorrow night with something very, very special, the history of the last post. All right. That's the origins of the last post tomorrow night. I know it's a lot to ask, but that'll close our program on Remembrance Day tomorrow night. Yes, and something special in our program tonight, which was sent to us by Stan as a party. We'll play it shortly. It's a song in memory of all our diggers who went to Vietnam. So okay. that'll be in the next hour. And also, talking to your mate, director Fred Skepsy. Yes, and now Fred has not only directed some wonderful productions over the years on mm. film, but uh, he's uh, manning up on a, a special art uh, um, exhibition. Okay. And a very special cause. All right. What about the TV ratings before we take calls? A good idea. Let's have a look at what, uh, what were the survey winners last night. And Nine News in Melbourne scooped the pool the first, uh, well, the whole hour. Well done. Uh, Followed by a current affair, the block was next, then Seven's News, then t uh, the, the hour news for mm. Seven. Australian Story, which is always very good on the ABC, 7.30 report, ABC News, Media Watch. Okay. So it was all news, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, nothing, nothing in that top ten. Gee, it's good to see, isn't it? People want to be informed, don't they? Well, I think, yeah, there's a bit of that and there's nothing mm. else on at six. No, but, you know, later in the night, programs rate well, don't they? Things after 8.30 and 9.30. Really. Not really. But obviously people are hooked on reality and current affairs. It was always Sir Frank Packer, wasn't it? And then later his son, Kerry Packer, mm. said, get them at 6 o'clock. Give them a 6 o'clock news service, or 6.30, as it was in those yeah. days. And you've got them for the rest of the night. And, and it's been proven to be true. And you were at 9 at the time, I think, when 60 Minutes started, and it didn't work at all. I got a 12 rating. Yes just didn't take off. Then he said, we're going to pursue, we're going to stay with us through hook or by mm. hook. Because it'll have been huge on CBS in America, and they wondered why it wasn't working. Well, that didn't mean that it's going to be huge here. No, but was it up against the comedy company originally? No. Oh, no, it was no. It was 30 years before that. Oh, OK. I don't know what it was up against. Mm, I can't recall either. I think it was something like New Faces or something yes, uh, at that time. Very slow to get going, wasn't it? Very much so. Yeah. Four Corners, that's been going for 50 years. Yes, was not it Bill Peach who did that originally? Yes, I think he did. Four Corners? Or was it Bob Moores? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you're right. I think, I think Bill Peach did more trouble. Yes, it's quite amazing when you say that. Current affairs programs withstood mm. the test of time. I mean, it's yeah. not a flash in the pan. Willisie goes back many, many years. Well, I remember Willisie went to air at, uh, at 6.30 after mm. the 6 o'clock news, and everyone at Channel 9 thought, this is, the, the, we're not going to be ready for that at mm. half past six. Mm. It's too heavy. Mm. We don't want to see Hawk and Peacock and all the rest of it. Yes, we did. But, boy, it, uh, it took a lot of persevering, but we, uh, we yeah, did last. Yeah. No doubt about it. Um, 
But Denise is there, Phil. Hi, Denise. Hello, Philip. Hello, Bruce. Yes, Denise. I'm just ringing up to... Um, so I had no TV and a lot of other people had no television for oh, two yes, you, nights. You rang us last night. Was it last night I rang oh, you? Oh, yeah. That I... was after two days without it. That's right. And um, I... Um, I rang around today, you know, like um, broadcasting, um, all those sort of things anyway. And eventually I came up with the fact that somebody told me to ring um, the LG company, which is what my TV was. So a lot of people have been out because the Broadcasting Commission, I think it was, said that if we have weather that's... Um, inversion, there was an inversion last night and it happened sort of around about... Well, it started about 10, and I woke up at 5 o'clock, I was sweating. It's like the strange weather conditions can yeah. affect television, right? Yes, yes. Especially the digital, apparently, for some reason. So what you do is you go into your settings, then you go to program, and then you go to auto-tuner, and then you reach... What you be, reach you, you, you put, go to auto-tuner, and it resets it. But before you do that, you take the um, plug out of the wall... You know, the, the your um, turn on off uh, yeah. TV. You have to unplug it all together. Yeah, well, we don't need to know the technical side, but the good news is it's back again, is it? Yeah, I, I, I went through all this with um, them today, and I've mm. got TV all night tonight, so it's great. Good. So LG came to your rescue. Some of the um, programming, you know, scores may not have been so perfect because there's a lot of people, you know, not on TV the other night, you mm -hmm. know, a couple of nights. No, not everybody has uh, rating meters on their TV. Well, I don't know, but anyway, I just I rang channel, channel Seven the first night it happened. They said mm. they got transmission problems, so there has been this inversion going on. Mm. I just want to let you know. That's all. All Jeez. right, that's very kind. We appreciate mm. that, Denise. Thanks so much. Okay. Good night. Think, uh, good night, because I think you did ring a couple of nights ago. Yes. Down um, Geelong way. And we gave us some recommendations, then, didn't we? We did. So it was the weather, Denise. Yeah, obviously. But, boys, uh, can I say? Standard definition television we had for years and years was wonderful. High definition digital TV comes in. We were going to be revolutionised with this wonderful picture, which is wonderful when it works. I don't think I've ever heard of so many people having so many problems with television mm. since the introduction of digital television. Mm. The mm. number of times my mum has called me and says, Ken, I've lost Channel 7. I don't mm. get any of the channel. Can you come around and reset it? Yeah. And I've got to do, as Denise mm. just said, go through all those sort of things. Can, can you do that? Can you immediately go over? I've got to go around and sit there yeah. and think, how do I go through that? How do I tune it again? Does Mother have no idea? No idea. <laughs> no, and if it wasn't for me, she would lose Channel 7. No, that would right? be gone. Mm. And, and what about the nights your picture pixelates or freezes or breaks up? Or yeah, just disappears, yeah, no that's, signal. Yeah, you're right. I know. Now, once upon a time, you'd get a bit of ghosting, a bit of snow, and maybe adjust the vertical hole. Or... You'd get some silver paper and bind the ears of that rabbit together. Yes, yes you would. Oh, do you remember that spiraled rabbit? Of course. Oh. It's spring. And if that went bung, you'd get an old coat hanger. That's right. And twist it into the map of Australia and put that on top. That's right. Yep. Or splar them right down. But it would work. Yes. And, and how often do you watch a DVD movie which mm. freeze frames or jumps? Oh, it's pixelated. Yes. Hey, that didn't happen in the days of videotape. No. Thank you, Denise, and mm. thank you, Ken. Inversion's a problem. Um, yeah. What's inversion? Well, she said it was due What's to inversion? the weather. It was due to the weather, oh, climatic. Yeah, you weren't listening. Be quiet. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no cars in Melbourne. What do we think of that? Oh, that will that never take stupid. off. That's but okay. If we have to park in the perimeter, where are we going to park? Yeah, our where cars? is the perimeter? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I think it's Spring Street. It's Gilda Road. The Queen Victoria Market. Uh, no, it, it, uh, pathetic suggestion oh. would never take off. No. I not, think they're going to do it as a one-off one not Sunday. Well, maybe one Sunday you try that. Yeah. Not sure. No, whoever thought of that's a dunce. Yeah, I agree. Chris, hello, Chris. Yeah, guys, how are you? Yeah, what can we do for you, Chris? I'll go and pick my lady friend up Thursday afternoon from the uh, Qantas arrivals at uh, Melbourne Airport. Uh, yeah. She's come to stay with me for a week. I've got to ring the officer house and try to see whether I've got to pay extra rent for that week, uh, even though she pays rent in government housing in Tasmania. And um, if I have to, so I think the figure would be roughly about 99 or $100. So I'm about $40 in credit and I pay an extra $10 a fortnight rent um, and then retrieve that sometimes around about Christmas time. Um, if I need to, you know, ask them politely to refund it to my bank account. 
and, and in doing that, that helps me to free up some money at Christmas time for you know for special things yeah. you know, for people. Um, I just sort of thought uh, I was listening to Steve Price and Andrew Bolton on. Now they're the two worst people. You 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 wouldn't normally hear me listening to them at any time. I wouldn't give them that. The, the day, uh, the, the light of day, but I thought I listened to him and I thought, what a whole, whole load of rubbish stuff we're talking about is 800, 800 uh, million um, lost on the East West Tunnel. Now, what they didn't consider is that the East West Tunnel was going to cost 8 billion. So, Dennis Nafine, and not Daniel Andrews, Dennis Nafine wrote in weeks before the election, he goes, we're heading for a landslide loss. We're going to lock in this project now and try and bribe the Victorian community in the voting back in the government and the voting in it. This east-west tunnel was going to be a car park within six months. So he locked in a compensation agreement. Dan Andrews said, I'm not going to spend one cent on this project. I'm going to build a multitude of roadways coming from western suburbs through the east, through the northern suburbs and all that. Yeah, and, and put the overpasses and underpasses on on uh, uh, where the boom gates are on all the different lines. So we're going to have about eight or ten roads, particularly in the inner north to the northern suburbs, so all the traffic can get through, not just on one east-west link tunnel, which was mm. going to be a car park. Mm. And see, so, um, Andrew Bolt and Stephen Price got this wrong. They're blaming Daniel Andrews. Daniel Andrews was voted in with with uh, a means to, to rip up the, the, the project, and because the compensation was locked in, he couldn't get out of that. But the thing is, we need major hospitals in, in this state. We need better school. We need better roads. We need the city of Melbourne, well, whatever they're going to do now, and they were right one way, all these um, bicycle lanes and one-way roads on the main roads around the city and, you know, super stops and all that. It's, stop, it's bringing traffic to a crawl. But I'll, I'll leave you with that in mind. But otherwise, right. I'm fine. I've got my injection today. Good, and I'm you're fine. on top of the world. Thank you, Chris. Now, Bruce, as you're aware, Peter Hitch and I can't make it tonight. Right. But our mate to stand as a party is in this... This wonderful song, uh, appropriate on the eve of Remembrance Day, a couple of his mates, Dennis Bugat and Rod Kenobi, have written a song in memory of all our diggers that went to Vietnam. <laughs> 50 years composed by Stan Hazapardi, Dennis Bugat and Rod Kenobi on the eve of Remembrance Day. Well done, fellas. Karen of Mitchum. Hello, Karen. Oh, hi. Hi, Bruce. Hi, Phil. Yeah, welcome to Nightline. Um, I've got some uh, tickets for um, the uh, Grand Hyatt. It's Saturday the 14th of November. Um, it's going to be a wonderful day. It's from 12.30 till 4 o'clock. Children invited. Well, what's it's, happening there? That's the... Uh, it's the grand opening of Wise... Angels Limited. It's a, a respite place for for women of domestic violence. Oh, it's yes. a grand oh, opening. Yes, you rang us, didn't you, last no, week? No, I didn't ring you. Oh, okay. Say how may have rang you. Yes, I think she did. Yes. Well, you two wouldn't like to come, would you? We'd love it. Well, I've, I've got a, a party to go to at the Olive Jar this Saturday, mm. but we'll promote oh, right. it. We'll promote it for you now, Karen. Whose party is it? I'm inviting my family, as I do once a year, oh, to lunch. everyone. Oh, well, yeah, 40, 40 of my family. Oh, well, all yeah. well, the tickets are $200. I've bought four. Yes. Uh, I'm quite willing to sell two of them for $120. Well, we really can't negotiate that over the radio. We're not allowed um, to do that. You're not. Okay. No, but, you know, people can go along and support it on the day okay, of the Grand he, he, Hyatt. Here's a solution. Yeah. Have you got a phone number? People can ring you now. Yes, definitely, because it's going to be a wonderful Good. afternoon. Get details, when to be there, and maybe get the tickets. Right. Details. It's at the Grand Hyatt, yeah. Collins Street, 12.30 till 4 p.m. A, the... a phone number. Our phone number is 0430 yes. 530. Five eight five. Yes. Five two six. Okay, and that's this weekend, this Saturday. This Saturday, yes. All right. It's going to be absolutely wonderful. Good luck, Karen. Okay, thank you, dear. Uh, this is three AW. It's uh, Nightline number one in Melbourne. Thank you so much. It's half past ten. On Nightline, it's a pleasure to say hello. Good evening to Fred Skepsy. Good evening, Fred. Good evening. Bruce, Bruce, Bruce and Phil, with you. 
Yeah, hi, Phil. The last, the last time I saw you in the flesh was behind Smith Street. You had a recording studio. We were doing some Grosby Shipmates Wolf commercials. <laughs> That's right. Do you remember that? That'll go back about 50 years, yeah. Fred. Uh, pretty close. Oh, pretty close. It was just you and me, and who would have thought that you would have scaled the, the great uh, lengths and heights you have? <laughs> me. Yeah. Ah. Well, the question I want to ask as a result of the Grosby commercials, why haven't you ever put Bruce into any of your movies? Come on, Fred. Um, mm. I've been waiting for the absolute perfect part. <laughs> ah, that's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> now, Fred, a little more important is the uh, is the art uh, the uh, the artist's paint for prostate cancer at the Moss Green Gallery in Armadale upcoming. Yep. Nine nine thirty five High Street. Yeah. So, what's what's your involvement with it, Fred? Why are you a part of it? Uh, I'm part of it because um, I support all the work and of the cancer research. Uh, having had a very successful operation at the hands of uh, Professor Costello, yes. who is who is brilliant at it and is leading a lot of the research that's making uh, changes and leaps and bounds and. Um, in, you know, in treating prostate cancer and um, running a clinic uh, that's actually free, uh, the first of its kind anywhere, uh, a men's clinic, and you can go along and get uh, in very comfortable surroundings all the advice that you need. Uh, and, it, uh, um, you know, with various doctors and have various tests, etc., uh, in a non-threatening, um, comfortable, confidential environment. Um, and uh, my wife Mary has collected together some of the greatest artists in Australia who have all donated work um, to be sold at, at this auction on uh, Sunday at 5 o'clock. Uh, titled the Don't Wait for Godot Art Auction, I assume don't wait till the end. Uh, that's right, yeah, don't, don't wait to do things. It's based on a quote out of a play. Let us not waste our time on idle discourse. Let us do something while we have the chance. It is not every day that we are needed, but at this place, at this moment of time, all mankind is us, whether we like it or not. Let us make the most of it before it's too late. Mm. Gee, they're, they're beautiful words. Isn't that worthwhile? Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Fred, just, just remind us of the where and when of this exhibition, please. Uh, it's Moss Green Gallery. And um, the address is 935 High Street, Armadale. Yeah. And it's at 5 p.m. this Sunday. And uh, the funds are, that we're trying to raise are specifically for a Eurodynamics machine. Um, this will really help the incredible research they do at this cancer clinic, um, which is already kind of discovered uh, some absolutely fantastic things that help uh, prostate cancer patients and other cancer patients and uh, uh, they're, they're at the, right at the forefront of all this uh, research and of course need all the funds they can get um, you know to go further. Yeah very worthwhile Fred. Are you making a movie at the moment? I wish. <laughs> oh yes? Tell me. No, I was. Um, unfortunately, we lost our funding, but I'm hoping um, early next year to be doing a film version of a musical called The Drowsy Chaperone. Oh, yes, the uh, one that Jeffrey Rush oh, was in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a fantastic musical that takes the mickey out of musicals while enjoying being one. Hmm. Uh, and you're led, you're led through them by, a, uh, by Jeffrey Rush. Uh, who's playing a man who just can't deal with life in New York and keeps escaping into uh, 20s musicals. Mm. Uh, and in fact, he gets completely lost in it. Uh, it's a great, it's a fantastic project. Yeah, we haven't made too many musical movies in Australia, have we? Uh, made a couple. Uh, Not too many. But by golly, when we, do, when we do this, very successful. Mm. I'm thinking of The Great Gatsby, yeah. and I think of Moulin Rouge. Yeah, exactly. And uh, what's that wonderful other one that Jeffrey was in? Uh, uh, the indigenous one. Uh, mm -hmm. Gone completely blank, but uh, it was quite a lot of fun too. And Jeffrey's. Well, what was the story? What was the uh, background to it? Uh, it was uh, set up with a 
in in the Pilbara, uh, and I think Jeffrey Rush plays a a rather stern priest. Was that Brand New uh, Day? Was it? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that the movie? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was good, you know. And now, uh, very good luck to you this coming weekend. And, and good luck personally with all uh, health and wealth and happiness mm. and all the rest of it, uh, both you and your wife, Fred. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks to these people. Uh, you know, I've been uh, in excellent health for well over 10 years now. And, Gee, that's uh, good. Uh, and you know what the alternative could have been if mm. uh, things weren't as... Uh, mm -hmm well researched as they are now. Yeah, exactly. Well, Bruce and I look forward to working with you on a, a movie project very soon. And, and I'm ready to do these Grosby Shipmates <laughs> Wolf Mate commercials. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Fred. Okay, great, guys. Good on you, Fred. Thanks a lot. Goodbye. Thank Goodbye. you. Good night. Bye. I think it could be time to move out of my place, which you needs oh, a good spring clean and a, and a spruce clean, up. A good wrecker's ball. Nice block of land, clear the thing, get rid of that old dump you've got there, that, that, that outhouse, and let's build 47 apartments and do well at us. OK, let's move on now. Uh, 19 to 11 tomorrow is Remembrance Day, Phil. Yes, and remember the minute silence at 11 a.m. And as a tribute, I'm doing one of the most beautiful pieces I think I've read ever. Right. It's uh, The Origins of the Last Post. And we'll do that tomorrow night on Nightline. Yeah, how interesting is that? Beautiful. The closing thoughts tomorrow night. All right. OK, 19 to 11 on uh, 3AW. It's Nightline making us number one in Melbourne. Here's a pal of ours, Lois at Frankston. Hello, Phil. Yes, Lois. And Bruce. Yes, Lois. How are you doing? Yeah, going, going well. Going well, thank you. That's good. Uh, Bruce. Yes, Lois. Bruce. Okay, how are they going? Oh, they're beautiful. Oh, hello, Dolly. Uh, Shirley Temple. Yeah. Oh. How'd you like a couple more Shirley Temple? Oh, no, you're too generous. I think Phil might be in the offing for one. Do you want one, Phil? Oh, dear, I don't play videotapes anymore, Lois, but thank you. I play DVDs well, these days. They are DVDs. They are DVDs. Oh, well, I wouldn't mind sharing them with Bruce. Uh, well, well, in fact, Bruce and I could watch them together. Oh, no, I don't think that will happen. Oh, no, thanks. <laughs> like solitary confinement. <laughs> I hear you every night, <laughs> You keep me going. <laughs> you make me laugh. Oh, you're lovely. Because I go to the hospital again on Friday. Yes. For another... Another a tray of breathing. Mm. Yeah, but not take me puffers or all that. Oh. Then I got to go to Danny Nong Hospital on Monday. Yeah. Oh, it never stop. But it's all for the best. It's keeping you healthy. Oh, I don't feel healthy. I sound all right. Mm. <laughs> I oh. try. I try to sound. Yeah, I know. You're always bright, you're always optimistic, and you're always positive. Neil Mitchell. 13 to 11, we've spoken about no cars in Melbourne. Your thoughts on that? Mm. Uh, a bit extreme, or oh. perhaps could there be a watering down of that and not so much yeah. of a don't bring your car in, but bring yeah. it to a, a safe parking area and uh, we'll have some buses. I think the plan is two years down the track, try it out one Sunday. That's the uh, idea. A Melbourne version of Monopoly. Did you see that exposed today? Yes. Uh, Greville Street, Chapel Street, mm. St Kilda Road, the the the, the uh, little tokens, the dice, or what, what is it, the tram, yes. a book, mm. a cappuccino, a takeaway coffee. Yeah, great idea, isn't it? Yes. Localising it at last. Yeah, it takes it away, I suppose, from Parker Brothers, which originally was yeah. uh, the grid of London, and uh, and people with the backside hanging out of their pants mm. right on the on their uppers. Yes. Uh, in the Great Depression of the 30s. That's when the game was uh, invented, well, yes. that's right. And you're getting around on a gold coach or a, mm. or a steamroller or a, right. a wheelbarrow painted gold. Yeah. They were the little tokens, weren't they? They were. It's good to have a local version. And of I, I, I was thinking of the games we played growing up. Was mm. Monopoly one of them? Yeah. Do you remember you got a very nice Monopoly set from mm. the Franklin Mint? But what were the games you played growing up? Was it the cricket game? Was it the mm. um, amazing uh, bowling game? Yes. 
Uh, what else? Might have been truth or consequences. Uh, you know, might have just been something simple like bingo that you played. Mm, but some of those older games, yes. Mm. Chinese checkers, they were great fun. Yes, or dominoes, perhaps. Mm. 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 Until... Uh, until, uh, well, what was the word game that came in? The Scrabble, uh, Scrabble, everybody had a, a box of Scrabble, didn't they? Yes, it's still a very popular game, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, they've just gone off the boil a little bit, those, oh, you those think so? games, aren't they? Yeah, people are into video games uh, now. A little bit now, aren't they? Mm. Anyway, let's talk about uh, games you enjoyed growing up and, and, and whether you had one of the old original Monopoly sets. Yes. Uh, uh, Richard at Rye. G'day, gentlemen, or good evening. Yeah, hi. Okay. Yeah. How you going, good? Yeah, thanks When you well. mentioned the... Monopoly from the Franklin Mint. I bought one about 15 years ago. Yes. And I don't know if it would be worth any more, but it, it had hardly been used, but they're beautiful. You know, you know what it, you mentioned it. Nothing they're glorious. Like, they be beautiful. Oh, but, yeah, yeah, like It's like, it's like re boring. real money, isn't it? <clears throat> well, it cost me about 800 when I bought it. Yeah, the, right. the money you're using on the game. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Yeah, but oh, everything looks real, it's really good. Yeah, anything yeah, from the Franklin Mint's always classy. Yeah, I don't like this new Melbourne caper. But not a, I like Melbourne, of course, but, mm. you know, when you talked about the dunes and things. Anyway, what I did want to ring up about, I, I did mention a while ago, a very dear friend of mine was in hospital for a little bit. Yes. It's her birthday tomorrow, and it's Susie Q. You might remember I mentioned her Yes, her let's wish her a happy birthday. How old tomorrow? Oh, I can't say that, mate. I'm a uh, gentleman. And is she out of hospital now? Yeah. yeah, yeah, she's at home, and hopefully she might be listening right now. Susie Q, yeah. happy birthday from Bruce and Phil. <laughs> Good on you, mate. Okay, Rich. Good on you, Blake. Thank you very much. Thanks, Richard. This is my line number one in Melbourne. Thank you very much. And we get a very special origin of the last post tomorrow night and on Remembrance Night. Yes, we're uh, only 12 hours away from the 11th hour of the 11th day. Maybe in the last hour you have some memories of uh, being in Afghanistan or well, maybe, Iraq. Maybe, perhaps something lighter. The Meyer Windows in the era of Fred Mas S. Musson. Yes. Was that his name, S. Musson? Uh, yes, it was. Did you know the man, Bruce? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. He was a flamboyant, wonderful character. Yes. And I worked at Myers with him. Oh, yes. I think the Myers Windows go back to about 1954, don't they? Well, they really go back to Fred. It was him who... Hello again. Oh, this is John Doremus with a passing swine. parade of the story of the rise and fall of a medieval dictator. His name was Nicholas de Rienzi. His ambition was to restore the vanished glories of Rome, and he might well have attained it had he not let power go to his head. I'll be back with his story after this message. We walk the think of Kitty, Mum and Dad and me. Love and share the colour, but we clean our feet for me. Brighten your family tea time with the luscious, fruity flavours of McClintock's jelly. For a bright young taste thrill, buy McClintock's today. Love and share the colour, but we clean our feet for me. The son of a Roman innkeeper, Nicholas or Cola de Rienzi, was born in Rome in or about the year 1313. At the time, Rome was in political chaos. Racked by internal strife and impoverished by war, its influence and glory had vanished. The death of Cola Rienzi's brother at the hands of a patrician nobleman fired him with zeal to curb the patrician's power and bring order to the city. He organized a powerful people's party and made himself a champion of the oppressed. Poverty-stricken wretches who swarmed and bred in Rome's derelict hovels were championed by this man. The Pope had long since taken refuge from his enemies at Avignon in France. And in 1342, Rienzi led a mission there to beg him to return. Though refusing his request, Pope Clement VI was charged by his eloquence and appointed him papal notary. In this capacity, Rienzi set about inflaming the Roman public against the ruling nobility. Tens of thousands rallied to his cause, and in May 1347, he proclaimed a people's parliament with himself as leader and overnight became virtual dictator of Rome. At the outset, he governed wisely and well. He cleaned up the city and restored order. He established an efficient police force and a powerful militia. A new spirit of hope swept the Roman provinces. Rienzi was hailed as a benefactor, and his authority was soon recognized far beyond the borders of Rome. But already the lust for power had begun to consume him. He dreamt of ruling all Italy and had himself crowned as Imperial Tribune. 
But from then on, the way was downhill for Cola de Rienzi. He plunged into excesses which not only drained the treasury, but took heavy toll of his popularity. His patrician enemies were quick to take advantage of the situation. Setting up an opposition government at Mariano, they amassed a large army that was soon ravaging Rienzi's provinces. Despite this, Rienzi went from excess to excess. Inevitably, he was excommunicated by the Pope and denounced a criminal, pagan, and heretic. And then one morning he woke to find a large sector of the city occupied with papal approval by the patricians and an army of 20,000 loot-hungry mercenaries. Fearing for his life, he fled from Rome and hid in a monastery where he remained for two years before proceeding to Prague. There he was flung into prison by the Holy Roman Emperor Charles IV and subsequently turned over to the Pope whose ecclesiastical court at Avignon sentenced him to death. Pope Clement died soon after, however, and his successor, Pope Innocent VI, repealed the death sentence. The latter had need of a strong man in Rome, and he sent Rienzi back there as a senator. Again, the lust for power took over. Butchering all who opposed him, Rienzi made a desperate bid to regain his former status, but Rome had had its full of Cola de Rienzi. Deserted by his supporters, he was sought out by an enraged mob and subjected to every form of indignity before being hacked to death. His remains were flung to a pack of hungry dogs. Our time is up to we meet again for another chapter in the passing parade. This is John Doremus, and goodbye for now. Pancake Parlor, thank you. Got some giveaways tonight. The Hamper World Hamper, valued at $100. We've got Patched, which is a device for your mobile phone. Hmm. Patched reduces mobile phone radiation by up to 95%. Uh, you can purchase them through uh, Chemist Warehouse. Yeah, I think that's the brainwave of Dr. John Tickell. But we've got a couple of these to give away called Patched, P-A-T-C-H apostrophe D. Mm, great idea. As well as, uh, what else is there, Phil? Of course, the... Uh, well, the pancake parlour is there. Uh, no, we've got the uh, the Kong Jumbler for the yeah, dog. Oh, the yeah. ball or the football version where the, the dog will gnaw away and keep himself occupied. Yeah, good for their all, teeth too. All mm. afternoon. Oh, yeah. Your calls are welcome, 969-169. We've spoken about no cars in Melbourne. Just drive to, well, I suppose the outskirts, find a car parking space mm. and catch a tram. No, that's the pits. Uh, a Melbourne version of Monopoly. What do we think of this? Does it take away from uh, the mystique of, uh, of London in the 30s yeah. when Parker Brothers devised the... Uh, the non-depressing game. Yeah, taking us right from Euston Station and Old Bond Street. The Meyer Windows under Fred Asmussen. Your memories mm. of Fred and yeah. the golden days of uh, retail trade in Burke Street. What's the theme this year, Bruce? Uh, oh, it's fascinating. I love it. All the the uh, old spots of Melbourne of, 50, of 60 oh. years ago. The Ho Hopeton Tea Rooms. Yes. The Flinders Street Station. Oh. Um... Uh, a tram outside, uh, trundling down Collins Street. Oh, wonderful. All with the look of the 50s. You must so take your grandchildren. We're going back in time. It's yes. rather lovely. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Okay, uh, and don't forget tomorrow on uh, Nightline, The Last Post, one of the most mm. beautiful pieces that I've ever read yeah. on the traditions, the origin of The Last Post right. in tribute to uh, Remembrance Day. I'll be waiting for that. That's on Nightline, number one in Melbourne, right. Phil. Yes, and here's Chris at Hastings. Bruce, hi, Chris. Hello, Phil. G'day. Uh, hello, uh, Bruce. That was great. Yeah, uh, what's your favourite tea, Bruce? Oh. Dilma, I like Dilma. Yeah, I love Dilma, yes. Beautiful tea. I have tried it quite often. Uh, yeah. How sweet it is. I, I, well, well, we've got shares in it, have we? Yeah. And uh, do you remember the old Busby Berkeley shows of uh, Bruce? Oh, they were quite stunning, they weren't were they? They were wonderful. Wonderful, yes. And and I was going to say, uh, something gets my goat. I don't want to be on a downside, but you know these cars that are going to drive themselves? I don't think that's going to work, Bruce. What happens after a couple of accidents? Well, well, you're supposed to not have any in them, I, I assume, yeah. Yeah, that's going to be it. Uh, and Monopoly, I got, you know what I got left out of the whole board game? One top hat and a little red house. <laughs> you're going to look mm. naked, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. Oh, please! <laughs> All right, Chris, thank you. Karen at Sunshine, good evening. Hi, Mrs. Phil. Um, I think the other thing to the my Christmas windows is a Christmas wish. Mm. That's what you said as well. 
Um, now, um, I heard something on the radio about smokes, packets of smokes going up from $20 to $40. Yeah, they will could, yes, in the future, yes. Oh, it's going to, is it? Oh, oh well, they're talking about it, yes. Talking about it, yeah. Um, I think it's a great idea. Oh, yeah, I've never smoked. Uh, never will. But um, I do feel sorry for people that do because it is a health risk, as everyone knows. Um, and so that's a great idea. I think it might discourage people from from smoking. Mm. I think they should do the same with alcoholic beverages. Yes. I think that they should double that as well. Yeah. Because, I mean, in excess, I mean, it is really unhealthy. Mm. And a lot of people can't control themselves. You know, they just get on the drink and stay on the drink. And it affects their liver. It can get sclerosis to the liver if you're um, in excess of alcoholic beverages. So I think that's a bit double that as well. Mm. Now, with childhood games, I, I used to play snakes and ladders. Remember that one? Of course. And Chinese checkers. And we used to get the playing cards and play snap and gin mummy. Yes. And that was always fun. Yes, they were. Those car games were great fun, weren't they? Oh, I really enjoyed them. Strip Jack yeah. naked and... Uh, Consequence or well, yeah, well, it, patience? It, it, it's a couple of them. The old maid and there was Snap, wasn't there? Yes, yes. You had two, uh, two of the same and you were quick enough to say Snap, you won them. Yes. Uh, thanks, Karen. Enid at Footscray. Hi, Hi, Enid. Hi, fellas. How are you tonight? G'day. Fine, thank you. I'm feeling really down when I think of how low these people can stoop to go to the Footscray Cemetery oh. and do the terrible damage they've done. Don't begin. You know, there's so many people still connected. Ooh. I had one uncle that was killed in the First World War and Bill Horrocks, who was a mayor of Fritzgray in 2002, did a lot of history and I've got quite a few letters that he found that came from men to their parents and family of what happened and they were writing about one of my uncles. And to read that letter, I think to myself, if some of these people read the injuries, the horrific injuries he got when he died, I wonder what they'll sleep tonight. Now, I've spoken to Michael Clark tonight, and I said it's a very sad day, Michael, because it was finished and ready for Anzac Day this year, and it was absolutely beautiful. Yes. If you can say a memorial was beautiful, it was. Mm. And to see this happen, you think to yourself, you know, I've always said there's good in a lot of people, but after this tonight, it makes you wonder. Yes, it does. It makes you truly wonder how can they put their head on a pillow tonight. Mm. They don't realise the damage they've done to so many people. No, you're so right. Um, but Michael said the service will go on tomorrow just the same. They were heading over there tonight, quite a few of them yeah, have thought yeah. out. And it will be on. So I hope they don't have a good night tonight, whoever. No, well, it. you know, I have three words for those people. Vermin, pig swill and scumbags. Yep, yep, absolutely. All right, Enid. Thank I think we you. might... Uh, thank you very much, Enid. I think we might just determine who we're talking about as opposed to our audience. We're talking about those um, <coughs> despicable characters who've stolen those headstones from the War Memorial. Exactly. Yes, that, that, that's who I'm alluding to. Tom Elliott brought a good thing up, well, a salient point about smokers. He said, if you're going to charge $50 a packet of cigarettes, he mm. said, everybody should go up and thank the smoker for the amount of excise, for the amount of tax, oh, for the yeah. amount of um, revenue, yes. whatever you like to call it, yes. that comes out of the backy. Are you, uh, my next door neighbour, Hilda, is a chain smoker, and she's paying already $40 for a packet of 50 cigarettes, and guess how long they last oh, her? Oh, that'd go through a morning, wouldn't it? She'd get through those in 24 Some hours. Dogs on her leg all she's night? She's really hooked, you know? Yeah. She's addicted. Yeah, yeah well, let's, and let's thank Edna. She's got uh, nicotine on her fingers, mm. nicotine stains on her lips. I don't want to know about it, I don't want to care, and I don't want to hear it. She's not attractive at all. No, how? vile and if that's if you're listening at the moment in bed with your nighty perhaps smudged with nicotine tomorrow night one of the best pieces i've ever recorded ever done on radio the last post the origins of the last post is a tribute to mm. remembrance day tomorrow night on nightline i've never stopped to think about it that'll be um, fascinating what where the last post came from originally yeah, well, that's right. Yeah, well, this is the the origins and yes. where it supposedly came from. Right. Tomorrow's weather, let's look at it. Uh, a low of 10 degrees overnight, quite a mildish cool night coming in. Uh, Wednesday's weather, partly cloudy, sunny breaks of forecast, a top of 22 degrees. Where will you be at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning? 
probably on the corner of Swanston and Flinders Street. Will you get a chance to pause and remember our war debt? Head bowed. Uh, isn't it disappointing, you know, you're standing to attention, so many taxis and trams roll well, by. It's just you. You close your eyes and don't take any notice of anyone around but you. such a lack of respect. And, uh... And that's where I'll be. All right, good. To hear. No, I'm not there to sign autographs or anything. I'll, I'll be just bowing yeah. my head. Well, I hope so. Be have you had a family who have served in war? Yes, I have. Uh, over the years? I had a great uncle and a father who was a, an air raid warden in North Fitzroy mm. in the Brownout days, mm. making sure that people's blinds were drawn mm. uh, on, the, on the day of the big uh, blurt. Yeah, he actually started World War II. And I had a mother who uh, packed dynamite over at Deer Park. Mm, I didn't know she was that nervous. She did that right through the war years for uh, for the war effort. Yeah. Mum, what's that black on your hang on your fingers? Nicotine. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't nicotine. It was mm. old nitrate. Yes. Black as the ace of mm. spades. <laughs> he had three fingers. Uh, yes, yeah, she, she lost one over uh, Yamaha. Uh, Behind her back, they called her Tokyo Rose. Uh, Joan and Ivanhoe, good evening. Oh, hi, fellas. How are you? Yeah, tonight? good now. Very good. Now, I'm just calling to highly recommend, on behalf of my mother and mother in law, who saw The Marriage of Figaro this afternoon. It was, oh? It's actually not released, it was really just a dress rehearsal. Oh, yes. But um, it will take place from the 12th to the 28th of November, and they saw it at the State Theatre at yeah. the Arts Centre, and they thoroughly enjoyed it. Mm. Um, and it went for a long time, apparently, from 10.30 a.m. till just after 2. Wow, <laughs> is that the, that the performance? Yeah. That, that was the performance, and it was like, um, they said that it was about a 15-minute interval, but it, oh. apparently it's a comedy, and it's just mm. um, a great opera, mm. for, particularly for people who are new to the opera sure. as well. So they thoroughly enjoyed it, and I thought, they're both too shy to actually ring up, so I thought, I'll give it a good plug. Okay, when's it on? Behalf. From the 12th to the 28th of November, but not only that, but that I've also got my niece, who's also got a small role in it. Well, she says that it's a small role, but apparently she appeared quite frequently as, oh. as one of the one of the maids. How lovely. This is Mozart's Marriage of Figaro. Yes, yes. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so that was really good. So I'm planning on seeing it once it actually opens, um, but I'm just really looking forward to it, and I'm so excited for her. So, yes. So it's really good. And I've missed... I haven't really tuned into much of the news tonight, but the new Monopoly game of about with that, the Melbourne edition, hmm. when is, will that be released? Yeah, I'm thinking well, that would make a fantastic Christmas present. Is it? Will it be available for this year for Christmas? Or? I believe it would be. They wouldn't oh. be bringing it out now if they didn't have some release date. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I will, because I tuned in. I'm thinking they didn't actually say if it was actually. Hmm. Uh, Joan, do you know what I do? I'd contact uh, a shop like Toys R Us. Well, I have to go there anyway. I've got my mum's right. birthday next week. Mm. So. Right. Well, uh, Joan, take mum along to the pancake parlour. A fifty-dollar pancake parlour voucher. Uh, open 24 hours at High Point, Doncaster, and uh, Malvern East. Not oh, far from not far from you, so don't hang up. Uh, hold that phone. Thank you. And uh, uh, try and get along to the marriage of Figaro, all of us. Yes, uh, between the 12th and the 28th at the State Theatre. I remember you went to another Mozart opera, and it was Amadeus oh, at the Athenaeum. Oh. oh, it was vile. There were subtitles on a screen above the Athenaeum. It was so bad you rang me at dinner ball oh. and left Jill in there on her she own. She said, I'm staying here, so I'm going up the foyer. Yeah. I'll sit there in the You're paper. going up to George's to shop oh, to get away from it. Uh, Ron of Fairfield. Yeah, Ron here. Yes, yeah, Ron, Ron, we know. Yeah, how's your ratings going there? Number one. Yes, we came in clearly. No, no, I'm talking about the talkback program with all your um, family. Yeah, between uh, 10 and 12. Oh. Yeah, no, that was before they mm. started. Yeah, the, the, today's figures aren't a true reflection of the new format uh, yet, Ron. Well, That'll be in December. Mm, okay. Yeah, well, it won't be very good, I don't think. Uh, well, um, time will tell. Now, well, I uh, remember you talking to Chris last night. Yes. Brody. Yeah. And uh, he told, he, he uh, said that he rang you and said that, that if he wants to talk to anyone, to, to ring Lifeline. Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay. Now, you're talking about old games, too. Fiddlesticks. I used to play fiddlesticks. Oh, yes, I love that. Mm. No, it was my grandmother. Yeah. My grandmother, she and she died when she was 100. She. And uh, actually, her, her 
her husband was Tom Sheehan that worked at the Kew Asylum. Oh, yes, I know the name, yes. Yeah, they lived in Grandview Terrace. That's right. In, uh, uh, well, Wilsmere, Wilsmere Road. Yeah, down North Kew, yes. Mm. That's correct, and Nanny used to have these little sticks you used to hold and let them all go. Oh. Just had to try and pick them out with, without moving another one. That's right. Yeah, fiddlesticks, they call them. I yeah. love them. Yes. Oh, you remember that? Oh, yes. Yeah, good memory, Ron. Wonderful, Thank you. wonderful mm. memory, Ron, of, uh, of the old fiddlesticks. Yeah. And sometimes you go and stay at a guest house and you open the cupboard and it's full of all these wonderful old games. If I may, when was the last guest house you attended, stayed, opened a cupboard and found those games? I will tell you. I would tell you. I would just hazard a guess, my dear friend. 1952. I'll give you the year and I'll tell you the guest house. The year was 1957. Mm. It was Two Bay's guest house, Torquay. That'd be about it. And you'd open the cupboard That's and right. have all these games. And you'd be playing with mum. Yeah, and they had a... On a laminex table with Dad flinging a dart at a wall. Yeah, and they had play piano too with the pianola rolls. And just about nobody else there. Mm-hmm. Sad. Yeah, that's what it was, I'm telling you. OK, Therese at Mill Park. Turn your radio down, Therese. Therese. Come on, come to the phone. Here we go. Therese at Mill Park. She'll be here in five seconds. Right. Okay. Come on, Therese. Hmm. Here we go. Hello. Therese. I think she's asleep. Mm. I don't blame her. I think she's been playing fiddlesticks all night and she's had it. I've heard the program. I don't blame her. She is fagged out. When a loved one passes away, it can...